Welcome to the Abundant Talk Show, where we are inspiring you to tap into your power to manifest the happiness, success, and fulfillment that you desire. I am your host, Niaje, the Upper Limit Coach. I am here to dismantle your limiting beliefs and remove the blocks so you can confidently live your life's purpose, because life is meant to be abundant. Hey, m ms Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Podcast. Today, I am joined by Daniel Gomez. I'm really excited to learn about what he does and his mission in this world. But before we get started into what it is that he does, Daniel, I want to ask you, what does abundance mean to you? Abundance is a lot of things, but the main thing abundance means is without the abundance of joy and happiness in your heart, it doesn't matter what you acquire, everything else in abundance you're always going to feel empty and you're never going to be that sense of fulfillment, that sense of just gratitude. So you got to have an abundance of joy and just happiness. And without that, you're never going to find contentment. Oh, I love it. I love it. So tell us about you. Who are you? What do you do? (laughs) Man, you know, uh, my name is Daniel Gomez and I'm a keynote speaker, corporate trainer and confidence architect. Mm. And in the confidence architect, I help businesses, Um, Through my confidence coaching, I build the business that you want. And through my confidence life coaching, we design and create the personal life that you want. Mm. And it's just a matter of going in there and really just, like I said, just really connecting with the people that you're serving. Because when you go in there and if you try to just put up a facade of who you are, like like a fake you, they can sense that. Mm -hmm. So when you go in there and you, when I do my coaching or whatever, I do my corporate trainings. I just tell them this is, I've, we've all failed and I don't hide my failures because through my transparency, it opens their heart to be real. And that's when true healing of their soul comes and they become, they can become that leader that they were born to be. They can become that executive they were born to be or that mom or anything. But if they don't see the realness in you, then they close themselves up to you. Yes. I love that. I love it. So I want to dive into the confidence and like how to help people build confidence, because I see that's one of the biggest issues that I see like with my clients is the confidence to put themselves out there. But before we dive into that, why is this important to you? Like what, what made this be part of your mission? Well, you know, I was in corporate America for almost 20 years running organizations and car dealerships and you don't realize it, but I was always, I just, I love helping people. And even though I ran, like I was the main guy at a lot of these organizations, I just answered to the owners. I still love to train because I love to impart encouragement and appreciation. It's just the way I've always led. And I think when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, mm. um, going on two years ago, I just took a step back and I resigned to take care of her because that's what God put in my heart to do. And when I really took back, I said, you know what? I think I'm tired of this corporate scenery just working. And I said, but you don't realize how much you do until you take back and self-assess who you are. And I was like, mm-hmm. I do. I do leadership development. I've done team building for 20 years. I've done, you know, encouragement for 20 years. I've done life coaching. But it's like, you know, you do it with your employees. And it's like, you don't realize it. And I said, well, you know what? If I can impact instead of having 100 employees at work, if I can um, pack an audience well then you take it to you 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 kind of just multiply people that you can encourage and affect Mm -hmm. i love it i love it yeah it's sometimes it takes these situations to just like really open our eyes to not only our power but how precious life is so yeah yeah. so i i think sometimes we don't realize like what happened to me i think i was i got up to a point where being in that leadership role sometimes you become selfish because you're so used, you're so catered to and, and you don't think about it, but it's like gaining weight. Nobody wants to gain weight, Mm -hmm. but all of a sudden you put on that blouse, you put on that skirt, you put on those pants or that tank top, you're going to the, to the lake or to the beach. And it's like, Oh crap, it doesn't fit me the same. And that's the way your ego creeps up on you. It's all of a sudden you're like, where did this dude come from? Where did this girl come from? But it's like, you kind of lose yourself and, your identity is in the role that you're playing instead of being that true identity who your creator created you to be. Mm, Wow. That's really powerful. Yeah. I love it. So, okay. Confidence. Now I, I have a lot of people that follow me that are coaches, entrepreneurs, stuff like that. And I want to say that confidence, I think is 
and and this this may not this this is just how I see it. I feel like confidence is at an all time low because of social media. So what what's happening is so many people are comparing their lives and their businesses and their relationships to people. To, to other people's lives on social media, but it's like, we're all putting this like facade on social <laughs> media. So then, then you're like, well, why is my business not doing this? Because it appears this person's business is doing this. So do, do you see that a lot when it comes to like affecting people's confidence? Yeah, of course, because this is what happens is just imagine we're looking in a mirror every day and you're looking at the wrong mirror. Mm. So this is, and, and just, so just imagine that there's a mirror right in front of me and you, the middle mirror, and then you have the mirror to the left, which is the mirror of you. And then you have the mirror to the right, which is the mirror of how other people see you. Mm. And too many times we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is we look at social media right off the bat before even taking time to brush our teeth. We just kind of roll over and we're laying sideways and we look at that. And I stopped doing that probably about two years ago. And so you look at this mirror and instead of staying in your lane, you go into the other lane mm. and your identity is like, wow, I wish I was there. Wow, they're doing amazing. And then they make a comment and you're like, you start feeling inferior, inferior. Mm. You're like, why don't, you know, like for instance, I was talking to this, to, to this one gentleman and they ended up buying a microphone for $3,000, $4,000. I'm like, is that really going to help your podcast be that much better? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But there's people that are out there that are going to be like, wow, I want a $5,000 microphone or 3000 because they want to be, you know, they, they want, they think it's going to help their self-image. Oh, I got a, I don't even know what the name of the dang microphone is, but it's not going to, it's not, <laughs> it's not really going to make a difference, right? Because if your heart is not there, the message that's going to come across through those vibes or those frequencies, it's not going to matter. Yeah. Or then we look at the mirror on, on, the, on the left-hand side, which is the mirror of our past failures her mirror of that I'm not good enough and we stay in that lane of, of failures and it's like right now you know I'm in my car because I just I'm, I'm finished the meeting but I people don't want to commit to what they need to do mm. and the confidence comes when you make a commitment to be on someone's podcast like yourself and you make a commitment to be on the other side of town well the confidence comes by just taking one step at a time and doing those little commitments that you say. Mm -hmm. Because above anything else, if you can't have credibility in any industry, then no one's gonna have confidence in you. Mm -hmm. So you have to have confidence in yourself that regardless how I feel this morning, regardless that I gotta drive in traffic the weekend of Memorial Day, and I don't really wanna do this, but you know what I said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. I told you I'm gonna be on your podcast and I'm gonna be on time, so I need to respect that fact that, hey, and when you show those, small seeds and you succeed in those little little everyday commitments and you do one other commitment like wow you know what i did something great today and look at that we're having an amazing conversation but if i wouldn't have shown up it wouldn't have built my confidence to say you know i can really deliver value because mm -hmm. this is the truth right mm -hmm. you know I, i've done i've done uh, hundreds of podcasts already but the thing is at first i was nervous it's like do they want to hear what i have to say you see what I mean? But mm -hmm. the confidence comes in showing up every day and then looking at what you're doing and you're like, wow, I'm doing this. Yeah. But you, but you keep on looking at this mirror about how other people look at you and, oh man, why did you make that comment? You know what? Maybe the comment wasn't from you. You have thousands of viewers and maybe, the, maybe what we're talking about today is I've come to the reality that this is what I say when I go speak at assemblies or wherever I go speak at corporate tits. If I touch one person's heart mm. and I change one person's life today, I did my job. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And when you think of it that way, you saved one soul today. I did my job for the day. Yeah. And that's where the victory is. But if you worry of how many people am I, and how many likes am I going to get on this video? And how many, and I'm talking, and I was talking to myself because there was many times when I was younger that I was like, man, nobody liked my post on LinkedIn. Right. Cause on Facebook, you know, I say this humbly, but I was like, I had a great following. I was like, man, get a hundred likes, boom, like that. And you go to LinkedIn and it's like, no followings, what? <laughs> no likes, what? And you got, I got discouraged for the first like four months that I really started using it for my business. Mm -hmm. But it took a year and two or three months to really get my LinkedIn. I'm up to like almost 6,000 followers on LinkedIn now, nice. but it didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it, I went through those months where I just posted this same thing on Facebook. I got a hundred likes. I got not even one like. What's going on, God? Mm-hmm. But it humbles you, right? But you stay with it. You're consistent. You're consistent. So the confidence comes, like I said, there's a middle mirror. And when you really look in that mirror of your creator, of your designer, of your maker, and you start looking at yourself through his eyes and through the true potential you have hidden inside of you, Mm -hmm. and you stop looking at the mirror of your past failures and the mirror of OPOs, right? Other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. When you stop, when you break those mirrors and you focus on me and you right here, this mirror of potential, what you focus on, you attract Mm. to yourself. Because this is a reality. The reality is we start believing the the OPO mirror, other people's Mm. opinions, and it becomes our reality. Mm. And then it's our real, it's our, it becomes a real life because the way you see yourself is who you are. So then we're unhappy. We're Mm. unfulfilled because we're living our life based on the false reality that this is who I am because this is what they say I am. But this is where the, this is where the psychological part comes in. You live it so much that you start to believe it. Yes. And then when you meet new people, that's the way they see you because that's the reality you're, you're giving them. Mm-hmm. Does that make Woo! sense? Yes, it does. It does. Look, guys, we're taking you to church today. Like, <laughs> that's so good. So good. Okay. So I just, I want to back up a little bit because that was like, everything you just said was so powerful. And I want to really make sure the audience just, just took in everything you just said. So number one, is in the morning, stop picking up your phone as soon as you wake up because you attach so much of your reality to social media. So if you wake up and you grab your phone first thing in the morning, and I'm guilty of this, I I will say like, I am guilty of this. If I have my phone on my nightstand, automatically I want to pick it up and start scrolling. But it's really important that you set your intentions for you for the day and ground yourself before you start scrolling on social media. So what you're doing is looking in that middle mirror, as he put it, rather than looking at everyone else's lives and, you know, judging yourself by how many likes you got on the last post you did before you went to sleep. So it's really, really important that you adapt that morning habit of not looking at your phone as soon as you wake up and scrolling on social media. I can literally sit there for like an hour (laughs) in the morning before (laughs) before I get out the bed, just scrolling and checking notifications. And it is really a bad habit. So that's one. Number two is show up. He said he was in his car and, you know, some people are listening on iTunes or Spotify and some people are watching the video. He's in his car right now, but at the end of the day, he just dropped so much value that it does not matter where he is or what his background looks like. What matters is that you show up so powerful, so yeah. powerful. And then <clears throat> the OPO, other people's opinion. I love that. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to use that. OPO. <laughs> so, not, so, not- not OPP, OPO. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, I, I remember OPP. Like that, I may show my age a little bit, but, <laughs> but yeah, not basing your self-image or your self-worth or self-value on OPO, other people's opinions. So really knowing who you are, really grounding yourself, however you ground yourself, whether it's meditation, whether it's journaling, whatever resonates with you, making sure that you know who you are without basing your self-worth on other people's opinions. Ah, oh, so much gold, so much gold. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 this, and this is an agreement that we've believed for ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's like, what I recommend is, is you really get a mirror. Mm-hmm. Go, to, go to the dollar store and get a dollar mirror and break the damn mirror. And when you break the damn mirror, you're, you're taking action and it's anchoring you to that. You know what? You, it, that's because no one, this is the thing is people, so many people are, have bought into the false belief that if you break a mirror, you get seven years bad luck. That's bull crap. It's, it's bull. <laughs> I break mirrors all the time. So literally as an action step to anchor yourself, go to the dollar store and buy two mirrors or three mirrors, whatever you want to do and break that mirror of other OPOs, break that mirror of your old self. And you're going to, you never break mirrors. So when just by doing that act, it's going to, it's going to register in your subconscious mind. You're going to be like, I remember when I broke my mirror. It's such a significant, just coaching tip to give to people. Break that. Don't write a letter. What's more, everybody writes letters. I mean, that's, it works. Believe me, I'm not knocking that. But why not take it a step further and break a damn mirror and you're going to remember that for the rest of your life. Hmm. 
So Makes just sense. Re reprogramming that thought of like bad luck and knowing you create your own reality. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I just break, I mean, just break the mirror. I mean, it's, it's, we're so, we're so worried about, especially like in our Hispanic culture, we have so many things that us Mexicans believe sometimes. Like if you drop a spoon, somebody's coming. If you throw salt over your back, <laughs> it's like all that crap's nonsense, right? Yeah. Yeah. But this is the point. It's, it's beliefs that we have. Yeah. And, and I think beliefs are overplayed sometimes, but it gets to the point where, okay, we're adult now. It's no longer a belief. Mm -hmm. It's an agreement that we're accepting for ourselves. Yes. So the question for your audience this morning is what agreement have you continued to accept that isn't reality, but it's a reality because you've agreed to accept it. Yes. Just break that agreement, break that contract. Yes, I love it. I love it. So, so much, so much gold there. Abundance Box is more than a subscription box. It's a movement. Not only are you sent spiritual goodies to your doorstep, it's a commitment to yourself to not settle, to live to your full potential and manifest the life that you truly desire. For more information, go to AbundanceHack.com forward slash box to receive crystals, sage, therapeutic grade essential oils, guided meditations, and access to the private Facebook group to connect with other awesome members of the Abundance Box tribe. Join the movement because life is meant to be abundant. All right, let's talk about confidence. So someone who is not confident, how can they build confidence? This is a, this is a key. And as children, I would say about 70% of us have never been reassured. Mm. So if you're never reassured about something, you were never told, great job. You were never told this. And I was guilty of this to my, to my son. He would wash my Harley and I would be like, well, you missed this, right? Well, you didn't do this right. So you critique them. So as children, myself, we're in a critique and it stays with us because usually it's our parent, our, our mom, or if not, it's even closer because believe it or not, our big brother, our big sister has more impact on who we are because we want to be like them because they're our role models. Mm -hmm. Mm. and then when you're doing say you go cut the yard and you're edging it oh it looks like crap you didn't do it right so in your mind you're like i'm not good enough you start to believe that and you go through your whole life believing this well the thing is this is that you have to reassure yourself at some point you have to start doing it you have to realize you know i might not be great but the more i do this it's gonna come so this is a quote i have for your for, for your audience right you don't have to be great to start but you do have to start to be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more the reputation comes, the more you do it, it's the more your confidence comes. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same thing. I, I coach some, um, some lawyers and they lose, they're great lawyers, but what happens is you lose two or three big cases and you start to doubt yourself. The negativity creeps in. And the thing is you got to go back and remember the victories you had mm -hmm. and anchor yourself to the memories that you had before. Mm -hmm. So it, one, right? Reassure yourself, mm -hmm. take action because mm -hmm. confidence comes through repetition and learning and that consistency, that repetition. And even though it might stink, the more and more you practice, the more confidence you get. How do you think Kawhi Leonard last night, I was watching the game with Toronto and Milwaukee for a while. He's at 92%. Why? Because he practices. If you look at a professional golfer, he, a pro, Tiger Woods hits over six to 7,000 golf balls a day. Mm. What is that? That's oh, repetition. Wow. That's yeah. repetition. So when the crunch time comes, you're there. How do I get on stage and speak to over a thousand people? Because I practice on videos every single day. I try to do a live or do something because yeah. it prepares you for that. Mm -hmm. But if you're never doing lives and you're a speaker, well, then you're only hurting yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're not putting out videos on YouTube, you're only hurting yourself because you build up that confidence little by little. And we're going to screw up. We're, we're going to mess up. I've, Believe me, I was talking to this because somebody was like, Daniel, do you ever, like, because I had a big conference here in San Antonio. I had, I had two speaking engagements on Tuesday. And like, man, you killed it. You crushed it. They go, man, you, you must have always done great. So you know what? There was actually one gig that I was really paid pretty good for that I felt bad because my wife had surgery like the day before. Mm. And I shouldn't have gone. I, but I had already, you know, of course, they give you have to deposit when you speak. So I, I was there. And even though people applauded me, and even in my heart, I knew that wasn't my best presentation. And it bothered me. It really did. It kind of lingered with me for about a week. But I said, you know, God, I showed up. Mm -hmm. 
most guys would have probably not even shown up and say, you know what, my wife just had surgery, major surgery to breast cancer. And like what I said earlier, you just got to show up. Mm -hmm. And that failure, that part that I just did it, even though it wasn't all of me because my mind wasn't focused on it, mm -hmm. I believe that the victories I'm reaping now are because I showed up. Mm -hmm. And most of us get paid for coaching. Most of us get paid for speaking. And we don't show up. So just by not showing up, you kill your own confidence because you don't believe in your own abilities. Yes. Does that make sense? Of course. Yes, I love it. I'm like, oh, so yeah. good. So good. Yeah, I love it. So, yeah, I, I do. I know when you said, um, like, your siblings, like, you, like, you want to be like your older brother or sister that that reminded me it just it reminded me to reach out to my little sister I have a sister that is 10 years younger than me and so that reassurance like that really resonates with me because I had a mom that never told me she was proud of me no matter what I did and I've had a pretty successful life but no matter what I did she always found a way to say like you could have done better and it's something that I've had to work through in my adult life because I've been really really hard on myself so no matter like how and I'm crushing it I'm crushing it every day but <laughs> but I had to be like you know what like I'm doing a good job and it's really important that you say like reassure yourself because especially today, like, I feel like society glorifies that workaholic, that hustler, that grinder, yeah. but we don't take time to practice self-compassion and say, you know what, you are doing a good job. You are crushing it. So I've gotten a habit of acknowledging that for myself. Like you're crushing it because like I would go, go, go and still feel like I could have done better. I could have done more. I could have done whatever, but just, just patting yourself on the back and saying you showed up like like that sometimes we need that for ourselves we really really yes. do yeah so so I'm, i have a, i have a i have the answer to your comment there most people are workaholics because they're not truly grateful for what they have mm. when you're not grateful for the successes that you've had no matter how small the victory mm. or how big the victory you're not going to be entitled with more mm -hmm. so it's a vicious cycle that you put yourself in you have an ungrateful heart, so you take action, you take action, you get to this point, I didn't do enough, so you take more action, and then you look back and you're still ungrateful, mm. so you continue, but when you have a heart of gratitude, it's like, you know what, I'm doing this, oh man, I messed up, but you know what, I showed up, mm -hmm. thank you God that I showed up today, just thank you that I, thank you that I, I'm here, mm -hmm. and when you really feel that in your heart, gratitude, then a bigger opportunity comes, and that's where the growth comes. Yeah. But, you know, I don't believe, and this is just my belief, and I would challenge anybody on this. You do got to work hard. I agree with that. But I don't believe you got to grind and hustle and work 17, 18 hours an hour or tw even 12, 12 hours a day. I, mm -hmm. I disagree with that because I got where I'm at, first of all, because you got to prioritize your life. Mm -hmm. So when you dishonor your, first of all, your, your, your creator, whatever mm -hmm. faith you are, Number one, that's your top level. Number two, if you're married and you dishonor your wife or your husband, your spouse, well, then you got two things out of order. And then number three, when you dishonor your children, mm. well, then you have three things out of order already. And then you have your business, number four. Mm -hmm. And I'll challenge anybody that if you do that philosophy, that priority list for at least a year, your business is going to be further than you ever thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just the truth. Because if you don't honor these people in your own household, well, then the people out there in the business world are never going to honor you because you're, you're, you're reaping what you're sowing. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. So yeah, I, I definitely believe in that. I did a, 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 a episode about life buckets and making sure that you're filling each life bucket. So there, that would be like, like your creator, your spirituality. Uh, I would group that into like self-care almost. And then you have like your family life bucket, you have like your kids, but making sure that you're paying attention to all of those, because if you allow one of those buckets to be depleted, it's going to affect your business. So yes. yeah, I a hundred percent agree with that. There's something you said before that I did want to touch on because when you said, when you said gratitude earlier, you mentioned if you, 
impacted one person, you did your job. I think that is so powerful, especially today in the time of social media. There's this, this like buzzword of like, I want to impact a million people. I want to help a million people, you know, lose weight or a million people write a book or coach a million women. But it's like, that's in my personal opinion, and I'm not downing anyone who says this, but I think yeah. that's ego. That, like, if we hit that number, that's making us feel good. And it means that we're losing sight of our actual purpose. If you impacted one person and you potentially saved their life or inspired them to take action, then that is something to be grateful for because you're living your purpose. Attaching it to a number is I feel like it's ego. It's ego. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. Because you know what happens? Ego is one of the blinders that bring people down. Because mm -hmm. ego is tied to pride. Mm -hmm. And this is hard for the personality type. Like if you're a driver or you call it whether you're a driver or a Ruby, you want to be the best. And it's human nature. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's our ego gets a hold of that. And it's like, great, but if you can't be, it goes back to what I just said, the circle, right, of gratitude. Mm -hmm. If you can't be grateful for that speaking engagement that you were blessed with, if you can't be grateful for that one client and you just take their money and you don't really give them your heart and soul to coach them or to guide them, or you don't, you speak at that engagement and you don't really give it a hundred percent, you're going to struggle to get more engagements because you reap what you sow. The universe knows it, right? The world, it's like Zig Ziglar always says, when you help somebody get what they want in life, it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. You're rewarded with that. And yeah. it's the truth of anything else. If you sow those seeds of, of ungratitude, you can lie to anybody you want, but ultimately that vibe you're giving out, you can't lie. It's kind of, it's kind of like if we take right now and we go plant an apple seed, we're going to get an apple tree. If we go plant a lemon seed, we're going to get a lemon tree. So if you're lying, if you're planting seeds of laziness, seeds of half fastness, seeds of Ah, uh, just enough to get by, not to get me fired. Well, guess mm -hmm. what you're going to reap? You're going to reap that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us, we don't get that as entrepreneurs. As, just as people, we don't get that. Mm -hmm. Right? And then we don't give, I want you to, I want, and this is, some, for, this is for some parents watching this. If you don't reap seeds of intentional time, quality time with your children, and it's not just handing them a phone here, play, play with this and shut up or give me your, here's your iPad and, be quiet for a while and leave me alone. Your, your, your children ain't going to grow up respecting you. And then we wonder why when at age they get to 12 or 13, they're out of control. Or when they get to high school, they don't, they're smoking pot or doing dope. It's mm -hmm. because you never sowed those seeds of intentional love to them. You just gave them a phone or you gave them a tablet. Here, get to work. Leave me alone. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my own thing right now. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It definitely does. And I, I so, think it's a really powerful message for parents. Yeah. So, but it goes back to that. So to go back to the confidence part, the thing is just show up. First of all, show up. And the smallest victory, like you said, if you impact one person that day, you showed up, you impacted one person that day. And number two, really, really, really celebrate your victories. It doesn't matter that, the person on the left lane impacted three or four. Who cares? Mm -hmm. If you can't be grateful for one, you're never going to get to three or four. Yeah. And if you're that person yeah. that's getting three or four and you're worried about 50, well, if you can't be grateful for those three or four, you're never going to get there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the confidence comes in showing up, being grateful, and reassuring yourself that, hey, I can do this. And that's, that's, a, big, that's a huge, huge part of it. I love it. I love it. So good. <laughs> Excuse me. So good. Okay. So the last thing before we wrap up is three tips for living an abundant life. Well, I think we talked about one of them already pretty much is being grateful. Mm -hmm. When you worry, when you worry like this, and this was a revelation I had, when you worry about that next speaking engagement, when you worry about that next training session, when you worry about that, <clears throat> that means I haven't been grateful for what I've been given. Mm -hmm. And I got in big trouble because what happened was I came back from California. I just got off stage with Tom Bilyeu. I chaired the stage with him. Mm -hmm. Time I was like, and so in my mind, I was like, man, okay, what's the next big thing? What's the next big thing? And I really felt like God said, dude, 
you can't even be grateful for this one and enjoy it and just marinate in it. Yeah. As soon as I got off the plane, that I was Sunday, the next day, Monday, it's like, okay, what's next? And I was thinking, man, it's, this is going to explode. It's going to do this. It exploded, but not the way I thought it was going to explode. Mm -hmm. And then for a week, I really, really felt like anxiety and just like, uh, I, I felt at, I wasn't at ease. Mm -hmm. But God showed me that I wasn't grateful for what he had given me. And when I learned to truly be grateful for my speaking engagements for my clients, guess what? I started charging more and they were paying it. Mm -hmm. And the second tip is just to have compassion towards people. Mm -hmm. We judge because like you said, we're always on social media. So we judge right away. Right. I love your hair. But somebody will see you and say like, well, why is she dying? Her? Who cares? Have mm -hmm. compassion. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a representation of lupus. How do they not know? Cause lupus is purple, oh. but they're quick. Oh. Yeah. A I lot of people were new today. <laughs> Right. But it's just it's just an example of people don't, don't know until. So have compassion because you never know what somebody's going through mm -hmm. until you walk a day in their shoes. Mm. Right. Yeah. And then the number three is be authentic. Yes. If you can't be real, if you think with your mind and you run your business with your mind instead of your heart, you're never going to be successful mm. because you're always going to be chasing. You're always going to be chasing riches and money. Mm -hmm. instead of chasing the abundance from your heart and the wealth from your heart. Mm -hmm. So you have to be authentic. I love that. I love that. So what, how do you feel? I just want to expand on that a little bit. How do you feel about there being a happy medium between your head and your heart? Is that possible? Well, it's easy. <laughs> well, it's, it's, easy. it's out, of, out of the issues of, from, from the heart flow the issues of life mm -hmm. right from your heart flow your thoughts so if your heart's not right all money does is magnify so if you're a greedy person and you become you be, start making money where well, you're just going to get greedier because that's where your heart is mm -hmm. but if yeah. you're a loving person and you're a caring giving person within well, the more you, you attain wealth and success right it's gonna it's gonna magnify that through your heart mm -hmm. so yes but your mind yes you want to you want you want to listen to your mind but more listen to your intuition, to your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because too much, if we go with our own human thinking, how can I say it? It's, um, we, we make the wrong decision because, they, put it this way. I'll, 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 this, I think this, is, this will answer your question. What you have mastered, you can walk away from. So if you're taking a gig just for the money and you're not, your heart's not in it, don't take it. Mm. If you're taking a client just for the money and you know that client, it's not going to be teachable. Don't take it. Mm. And there's many times that I've passed on opportunities and say, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. And when you do that, when you master and you walk away from things like that, the universe gives you another one that's even better. Mm. I love it. I love it. So good. <laughs> so good. So where can people find you? Uh, they can go to danielgomezspeaker.com. That's danielgomezspeaker.com. And what I did for your audience is, as a matter of fact, I have a special for them right now when they buy the 30-day um, transformational program. I'm going to upgrade them at no additional charge to my 12-week program for them. And that's my gift for me to your audience to help them get the mindset, to help them get the daily habits, to help them get those successful skills that they need, the principles. Mm -hmm. And I teach that in my 12, uh, 12 lessons for the 12 weeks. And it's an amazing contest. So getting that 30-day, I upgrade them and they save over $600. And that's my gift from me to you, to your audience at danielgomezspeaker.com. Awesome. So I will have that in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on. This has been amazing. So many golden nuggets. So I know the audience found value in this. So thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. And it's been an honor being on your show and may more successes come your way. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, M&Ms. Until next time, love and light. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our yummy episodes. Every time you leave a five-star rating or review, I do my happy dance. <laughs>